This video will be a deeper dive into my Star Citizen controller setup. What I have here, how I use them and how I have everything set up. Here I concentrate on Star Citizen, but I do use this setup to play other simulators too and I'm actually building the Hornet setup for DCS. But I haven't had that much time to work with it recently, so that will be a topic for later videos. Also, I have a ship giveaway, courtesy of this video sponsor Game Class. I'm giving, giving away one Avenger Titan, which is surprisingly good, fun little ship in this new patch. Since it has a trility, it has firepower, and it has room for your loot. So more about that at the end of the video. Game class that I, I have here is an app to turn your tablet, your phone, or your touch display into a game controller. I'm going to go a bit deeper in it when it's time for the touch screens. But if you want to try the game class and want to help the channel a bit, you can use my affiliate link, it's in the description, and use a promo code UNDEAD to get 5% off. But now, let's start the deep dive. First thing I need to do is get to my ship, and if I don't want any extra hassle, I can use the trackball I have, and I have movement to configure to my throttle, so I can just use my left thumb to control the movement. You might be asking if this is a good way to move around and it's not. But at the same time you might ask that does a green glowing trackball look good in my cockpit? And that's absolutely yes. And this is important principle for me. I don't think about effectiveness or immersion, but only one question. Is it fun for me? I find that Aventure Titan is quite fun ship in creating with some room for looting. And here I'm resetting my track IR5. I have those controls on my joystick. I will go through these DIY panels a bit later in this video. Let's start with basic movement. For my right hand, I have Verbal Warbeer D base with Constellation Alpha Grip. I ended up with Central Mounted Stick because that's what the Hornet has, so this is compatible with my DCS gameplay. Also, at the same time, this feels a bit better for my shoulder, and I seem to be enjoying this a bit more. The joystick is connected to a USB extension cord in the center pillar and even though I cannot at least yet switch the joysticks easily, I actually recently bought a second hand Win Wing Hotus, so it's something I need to figure out quite quickly. I'm using basic airplane controls here, the joystick controls, pitch and roll and the Thrustmaster TPR pedals control yaw. And while this is not the most effective setup, for space simulators, it is just something I find I enjoy the most. For my left hand, I also have Purple Warbeard base and already now discontinued Constellation Delta Grip. And the jet axis adapter that makes it basically horizontal makes it just feel more natural when controlling with your left hand. The throttle itself is mostly for flight simulators, but I do have the thruster forward binding in Star Citizen so I can use it if I need to travel longer distances. The left joystick controls basically move in all directions. If I push it forward it's forward and backward, left and right is strafe and the twist axis is strafe up and down. And I can easily take the left joystick off, push the throttle forward and make the setup basic holder setup. Before we can talk about combat, we actually need to get there, so I guess this might be a great time to talk about my touch screens here. As I mentioned, I'm using Game Class, which is basically an app that turns your touch device into a game controller. 
I have been using Game Class basically as long as I have been playing Star Citizen. And since the central dashboard display is not that useful for Star Citizen at the moment, I decided that I'm going to use old 15.6 inch touch display that I had and just decided to build an interesting setup around it. That's actually the topic of my previous video. Then I also have a smaller tablet at the center column because I just had it available and there was some room for it. The game class software is running on my main PC and I have the app on my tablet and the touch display is connected to external PC that I use to record my gameplay videos and it's just a browser where I go to the address app.gameclass.gg. Even if I have a lot of physical bindings or physical buttons, the touch displays are just a really fun and nice looking addition to my setup and they are also versatile. For example, on the tablet I am planning to use DCS SRS Simple Standalone Radio, which is a VoIP software that works also outside DCS. As I'm closing the enemy, it's time to arm the weapons and this basically doesn't do anything inside the game. It just changes the mode so that the, my trigger actually operates the guns in joystick Kremlin and most importantly with verbal software it changes the colors to red. Right hand joystick has all the important combat functions. The power triangle is under my thumb and so are the countermeasures. I can change the amount of countermeasures. I can control the missiles. The missile mode is actually bind to my flip trigger, so when I pull the flip trigger down, it enters the missile mode. And the dual stage trigger has the weapon groups 1 and 2 on different stages. And time for some looting. I have this mouse mat on all display arm and on my left side I have Razor Tartars V2 on a 3D printed stand. As I'm closing the next days of my journey, I figure out I could talk about the rebel control panels. Both are basically mounted with the 3D printed trims and the whole panels come off easily. Both are also connected in the powered USB hubs that I have on both sides. On the right hand side I have the rebel control panel number one. And it mostly has stuff like opening and closing doors and turning on and off the headlights. The dials control speed limiter and acceleration limiter. And on the left side I have the control panel number 2, which beyond the basic gear level lever has just some basic communication stuff and ship modes and natural to self-destruction. While the arm mode turns the lights red, the landing mode turns them purple. And in this case it just edits the joystick curve so it's less responsive and easier, easier for fine controls. And if I really want a soft landing, I can actually use the acceleration limiter. Limiter dial to turn down the acceleration and just glide to the surface. And as I power down the engines, I think it's great time to talk about these DIY panels. 
I actually have two episodes of me building these panels in the cockpit built playlist, so check those out if you're interested in more details. The angled panels are a permanent part of the setup, and on the left side I have a stream deck, and on the right side I have a panel to control the cockpit lighting. Inner panels are modular, so I can basically just take the panel off easily, plug in the USB and the lighting power cable, and switch it into something else. And this is something that I'm going to be using at least when I'm designing the Hornet stuff for DCS. But at the moment for Star Citizen on my right hand side, I have just a basic power control panel that I have built for fun, and the trackball. And if I really want to do some FPS gameplay. And in this case, the question really isn't that can I or can I not, because I can. But should I? Probably not. Okay, so the gameplay wasn't that stellar today, but that wasn't the point of this video. And if you have any questions or comments of the setups, want to know some more about some details, don't hesitate to ask, drop a comment. And naturally, if you like the setup, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And now the giveaway. So I'm giving away one Avenger Titan with the courtesy of this video sponsor game class, which is, as I mentioned before, really fun ship in this patch. All you have to do is comment on this video and I'm going to raffle the ship to one winner, one lucky winner in two weeks when the next video after this comes live. And while commenting, I would naturally appreciate some feedback what sort of videos would you like to see? Any ideas how to improve anything regarding my channel? That's always appreciated. So thanks for watching and see you next time.